Welcome, this is Copernicus Center for Interdisciplinary Studies. My name is Tomasz Miller and our guest today is Professor Karol Rzyczkowski from Jagiellonian University. Hello, good morning. Professor Rzyczkowski works at the Institute of Theoretical Physics of the Jagiellonian University, Center for Theoretical Physics of the Polish Academy of Sciences, and also he is the head of the Kraków branch of the Polish Academy of Science. And he has just received a prestigious ERC Advanced Grant 2023. The name of the project is Tatypic, Typical and Atypical Structures in Quantum Theory. Uh, I'd like to ask you some questions about your project, but before we get to that, let's start from the basics. What is quantum mechanics, quantum theory? How would you briefly describe it? First, let me ask a more fundamental question. What is physics? Physics is a science about the world, the world we look around, we observe, we try to measure something and predict some phenomena. And quantum physics deals with micro world and the rules governing micro world are very different from those we are used to at uh, our everyday. But what is the key difference between this quantum world and the world that we know from everyday experience? Well, let me take an object, macroscopic object like self-standard die. We can predict that if I throw it, it will go down. It's difficult to predict what will be the outcome of such a move. But I can tell what is the position or velocity, momentum of a given particle. However, in the case of micro world, we also have small particles, sometimes called elementary particles, but we are not able to tell where a given particle is, where it will be measured, what is its velocity. We can only try to estimate probability it is located in some region of the space, or we can predict the outcome, the probability of an outcome of a measure. Well, I can imagine that you have to use a completely different mathematical structures to describe such weird quantum objects than you do in classical physics. So, what are those mathematical structures that you use? Very much so. We use so-called, the key notion is a quantum state, which is just a mathematical tool used to compute probabilities of certain outcomes of measurement. A simple measurement is, for instance, a detector and whether it will detect a particle or not detect. And you can ask only what is the probability the, out, the result is positive. Okay, but uh, states evolve in time. So there have to be some, some other structures that describe how the states change as the time progresses, right? Yes. We analyze evolution, time evolution, not of a given particle, but of probabilities which describe outcomes of measurement. And one uses all stroboscopic approach, so-called quantum operations or quantum maps, or con evolution in continuous time. Here I'm pleased to mention some eminent names of Polish physicists. Uh, there is a kosakowski lindblad gorini sudarshan equation, Professor Kosakowski, late Professor Kosakowski from Torun, uh, played an important role in uh, deriving this fundamental equation which just describes evolution of probabilities in time. Okay, but still we are talking only about those typical structures and the title of your grant mentions also the atypical structures in quantum theory. So what are those atypical structures that you're going to study? Well, I use here uh, dice uh, and let me take another one. So if you take two uh, such dice, we can imagine that if probability of obtaining, let's say, six is one-sixth if the dice is fair, second one is also fair, but now if we throw them like this, it is highly unlikely to guess that they, there might be a perfect correlation between outcomes on the, let's say, yellow dice and white dice. And the quantum world, quantum mechanics, allows for such special states, they are called entangled states. Entanglement is just correlation between outcomes of measurements and such an entangled state has such a strange property that if you measure, if you obtain number two on the yellow dice, you will also get number two at the right dice, which classically looks completely not understandable. Hmm. 
Mm. And this is just uh, curiosity, or, it, or can it be used in, in some so quantum technologies? So it's very atypical states, so-called generalized Bell state, and such states are, let's say, the key fuel for quantum information processing, for quantum teleportation, for quantum computation, quantum communication. And this is a relatively new field of science. It was started some 30 years ago, and now we know about progress in quantum computing, and quantum computing bases on such special states like entangled states. Okay, so this sounds very interesting and timely. Um, so why to study the typical structures as well? Are the typical structures also interesting still? For well, they are used, let's say, for, as a reference point. Ah, let me give you such an example. Let's assume that our friend goes to some remote country, let's say San Escobar, there is such a strange country far away, and we learn that he earns, let's say, 7,700 cruzeiros per month. Is it a huge number or not? We don't know. So it's an interesting example of a number, 7,700, which tells us nothing, unless we know what is the average salary in San Escobar. If it's 1,000, then his salary is fine. If it's, let's say, 10,000, then he's underpaid, possibly. So, this is the argument that some average values, like mean value or average value, play an important role as a reference point. Therefore, we are going also to study typical states to compute with so-called random matrix theory generic values, which will serve as a reference point, and then for those special, atypical states with special properties, we can basically show how much they are better, larger, or more applicable than the typical states. Right, okay. And if you were to summarize like the main final outcome of the project that you intend to obtain, what would it be? Well, we hope to improve our understanding of the rules of quantum mechanics, we are going to find out what will be special, let, us, let me use this word, atypical states which were not discovered so far, and we'll try to find their application in quantum information processing. Let me maybe show you a simple example concerning the atypical state we designed some time ago. Here is a strange example of a combinatorial design. It's three times three square. Look, there are nine cards, three aces, three kings, three queens, ordered in such a way that in each row, each column, you have only a single card of a given suit and a given rank. It's not difficult to construct such a, uh, such a square and some those objects, combinatorial objects, were studied many years ago by Euler, but relatively recently, like 10 years ago, people realized that such a design, classical design, leads to very nice entangled states of four parties with three levels each. Well, not going into details, I will only mention that such structures exist for dimension three, as you see, also four, five, but the problem starts with the dimension 6. Let me show you here a strange 6 times 6 chessboard with 36 pieces. You see there are exactly 6 queens, 6 kings, 6 pawns, and so on, ordered in such a way that in each column, each row, there is only a single piece. This is easy to be done. So from the Euler perspective, it's a single Latin square. But now, to get an analog of those orthogonal Latin squares, or called sometimes Greek or Latin squares, we need to color those figures into six colors. And you see here, this is relatively easy to be done if you start, let's say, first row, second row, last row. Here, you see such a situation, there are exactly 32 out of 36 pieces colored, there are only four figures missing. So there are those four figures here we should, in principle, put in the center and color them. And Euler was the first to realize that for dimension of size 6, such a structure is not possible. It was called, nowadays in mathematics, the famous problem of 36 officers of Euler, because originally motivation stemmed from the military purposes uh, at the time of Charles 
uh, Catherine in St. Petersburg, they wanted to organize um, army uh, in such a way that there are six uh, officers from a single unit, six from other unit, and of six different ranks, and order them in such a way that it looks nicely. It happened that it's not possible, and what we managed to do is to find a solution of a quantum version of such a problem. If you allow now to use entangled states, which means that in given square of the board, there is not a single piece, but a superposition of two, three, or four pieces. As you see, small figures, the size represents the amplitude probability of finding such a piece. Then such a solution is possible. And strangely enough, this very configuration leads directly to our new entangled state, which in a sense corresponds to four dice, which are prepared in such a state that if you choose any two of them, let's say those two, and look at the outcome of the measurement, you can predict the outcome on two other dice, which classically is not possible. And then such a quantum state, which is visualized here, four dice, because first dice corresponds to labeling the rows, second labels columns, third labels suits, and fourth labels ranks of the officers. And such a state, new uh, discovered state, can be useful for certain uh, protocols of uh, quantum information processing, including teleportation. Hmm. So there's another example of, uh, of a problem which doesn't have any classical solution, but quantum, in, in the quantum world, turns out to be possible. Yes, and this is some small example of quantum advantage, and this fashionable term means we would like to find such problems which cannot be solved classically, but can be solved in the quantum world. For instance, we are looking for so-called quantum computational advantage, which means to find such a problem which cannot be computed using classical computer in a finite time, let's say one week or one month or even 10 years, but it should be in principle, computable using a quantum computer, if quantum computers would be good enough. Hmm. So let me ask some more questions uh, about the organizational structure of, of the project. So how many people are going to be involved in this project? We'll employ three, four or five mm, highly qualified people, and I hope they will come and who wish to work in Poland, in Krakow, from abroad. So I'm very pleased we have now some money obtained from Brussels, and we hope to employ uh, key scientists knowing the subject, which will help me to obtain uh, substantial results in this field. And Professor, do you have any advice for as aspiring re researchers how to get such a prestigious grant? Of course, you have to apply for such a grant to get it. And then I would suggest all qualified researchers in Poland should apply. However, the tricky question is who is qualified. And I recall a strange instruction to a boomerang my son got some time ago. It was written there that this boomerang returns if correctly thrown. So the application has to be submitted if there are fair chances that you will obtain it. And how to check whether you have some chances. My criterion is very simple. I believe everybody should look at the list of laureates during the last two, three or four editions in given field, look at their CV and think whether your own CV are comparable, whether any referee or member of the panel could take your results, your CV comparable to those which obtained the grant. And in such a rather not very uh, frequent case, if you really believe that your scientific achievements are at the comparable level, then it is good to think in advance half a year or even longer to prepare a good project. Okay, so resume is important, but I guess uh, also the research project itself has to be good, right? Yes, it has to be good, but if you have very good project, but not good uh, uh, curriculum, then your chances are zero. Therefore, you on one hand first 
uh, checkers whether your uh, scientific uh, achievement are uh, at such a level that you can be considered as a leader of the field. And if only if this, is, this condition is satisfied, then you should think, not during a week or two, but I would say half a year or longer, to prepare in a slow pace a clear, well-focused project which, would be, which, which will have chances to uh, be well received. And let me ask you one more, maybe more general question. Uh, how to increase the number of ERC grants uh, obtained by science teams from Poland, from Central Europe? It is not easy. Well, maybe you know that during the last 15 years there were not so many such grants in Poland, in other countries. Situation slowly improves. We have now a few more grants, especially at this lower level of, for younger people, starting grants and consolidators. But my advanced grant is, as far as I know, the first one, not only at my university, uh, but also in Krakow, which basically shows that there is a problem. People from our part of Europe are usually not, well, uh, perhaps they are uh, too shy and uh, some of them who really have good results do not wish to start in such a competition. I would like to encourage them. On the other hand, only I would like to encourage those whose results are comparable with the leaders of the field. And then I think Polish, uh, we have this uh, Polish contact uh, office uh, for European grants, which does a lot of help. But still, Polish Ministry of Science could, for instance, uh, encourage scientists in a way that for those who qualify to the second stage and do not make the last step, the projects are not financed, they could get such an uh, extra uh, grant from a Polish um, financed by Polish side, just to encourage good people to, uh, to apply. Thank you very much. Our guest was Professor Karol Rzyczkowski from Jagiellonian University and Polish Academy of Science. Good luck with your project, Professor. Thank you very much, and I wish good luck to all other colleagues in Poland and in this part of the Europe to try their chances, and I wish you will receive such European grants as well. Good luck.